Hello, my name is Alex, and in this video, we're going to be going over the content security policy in the context of Angular. So if you're new to this, the idea behind the content security policy is to either allow or prohibit your browser from loading specific resources. So for example, you may have scripts, styles, images, fonts, iframes, etc. And all of these things will be loaded uh, via the web application into your browser. Now, sometimes malicious third parties may attempt to inject their own scripts into your web application, compromising its security. So for example, a user may be browsing your web application and a third party acting as a man in the middle may attempt to inject a malicious script into your application and make the user run that script. So the danger in that is that the user will be unknowingly interacting with a script which doesn't come from your web application. Now to mitigate that issue, the content security policy can basically set a set of rules which dictate which resources can and cannot load within your web application. Now the content security policy, aka the set of rules, may come directly from Angular or it may also come from your backend, which will usually be a server like Nginx or maybe some proxy like Haproxy. So basically in essence, you have a set of instructions which will be sent to your browser and it will be basically fetched either from the backend or from within your web application. And these instructions will dictate which resources can load uh, on your user's machine. So basically, this is a way to mitigate any third party injection attacks. So with that knowledge, let's take a look at how we can configure set policy and what we need to do. Now, the first step is understanding where we can declare set policy. So like I mentioned before, there are two ways of declaring a content security policy. The first one is the most usual one where the policy itself will be coming from the backend. So here I have an Angular project and this project was set up for a previous video of mine and it is essentially an engine server which serves our Angular web application and then we're using Docker to create a container which runs that server. If you haven't seen that video, I do highly recommend watching it as I'm going in depth uh, on how to deploy your Angular web application with Docker and Nginx. So having that said, let's go ahead and let's uh, declare our content security policy to start with. Now, let's say we want to declare our content security policy in our Nginx server. Now, all you need to do is go under your location here and you need to add this header which essentially adds a content security policy with the following rules. So basically here, as you can see, uh, actually let's get rid of uh, this part for now. So basically, as you can see here, we have a default source, which is set to self. Then we have a script source, a style source, an image source, etc. And basically we are telling uh, our browser from which sources we are allowing to load these specific resources. Now, as you can see in this example, we're essentially saying that we're allowing to load these specific resources from these sources. And the format is the type of resource. So basically a script source is allowed to be loaded from self, aka from the application itself, or from youtube.com or from serif.com. And we're applying this schema to all of these sources. Now, the last part here is the connection source. And here you're basically stating uh, to which endpoints you're allowing your application to connect to. So for example, here we could say youtube.com and that would mean that you would be able to make API requests to youtube.com from your application without them being blocked. So this is a great way to establish a set of rules for what can and what cannot load from within your web application. Now, basically, if we uh, serve our application with this set of rules, uh, anything that is outside of these rules will be essentially blocked. So let's go ahead and let's save that. And let's try to 
build a Docker image and then try to run a container off of that image to see what happens when we apply these rules. So to do that, I'm just going to start a new terminal. And then we just need to run a simple command to build a Docker image. So we're going to just say Docker build. And then basically we need to state the name of the image. So we're going to be saying dash T and let's call this uh, demo. And then this should be followed by the version. And then we're just going to say dot. And this will essentially build a Docker image based on our Docker file. Now, again, if you're interested in the Docker file, you can just watch the previous video on Angular application deployment with Docker and Nanjinx. So now with our image built, we can go to Docker Hub. And from here, I'm going to go to my images and I'm going to run a new image here. So we will just run it at port 889. So we're running, sorry, a new container off of our image and we can click run and that will basically start our container. And then we can go to localhost 889. And as you can see, everything is working. But if we go into our console, we can see a warning that we're violating the content security policy. Now, these warnings will vary, but basically they will be very similar. And basically they're telling us that we need to either use a hash or a nonce, or we can use a unsafe inline. Now, basically the easiest way to deal with this would be to just use unsafe inline. So that would imply that you need to go back to your configuration here and you just need to add unsafe inline to your styles and scripts and that would basically defeat the whole purpose of the policy because it is a very easy way for an attacker to bypass your policy. So basically doing this is a very bad solution and we don't want to do that. Now, basically the second way and the correct way of doing that is by adding a number used once. So this is called a nonce. And for my British audience, uh, this is not what you're thinking of. This is basically a unique number, which is essentially issued to, um, to your application every time it is being served from the server. So basically the engine server here is uh, serving your application live to every user. And every time we're serving this application, we want to issue a unique number and include that number both in the content security policy and in our application files. So basically what you're doing is you're, is you're saying, hey, I want a unique number to be an identifier for my uh, styles and scripts. And this way, if the attacker tries to inject foreign scripts or styles into my website, they will not be able to do that because every time the user reloads the application, a new unique number will be issued, rendering any injected uh, scripts and styles and any uh, malicious injected code uh, useless because the application will not load that code. So basically the idea here is that we need to add this unique uh, number both to our policy and somehow to our application files. So here in this example, here is my application and I would need to add this to my application files. Now, before we do that, however, I want to show you how you can add the same policy on the side of Angular as well, just for context. So we're going to be copying this and now we can go to index.html and the way you do that is by simply adding a header here. So let's just go ahead and let's put this policy in a comment here. And uh, now it will be automatically generated for us since I am using Copilot. And as you can see, this is our policy. So basically this is just a meta tag with the HTTP equiv property, which has our content security policy header here. And then we have the content in here. So the content in here will be identical to the content here. So if you were to add this tag, and if you were to run your application, this would have essentially the same effect as uh, here. 
but in all honesty this is not the best way to do that because again you need to include your unique identifier within your tag and doing so uh, through index.html is a little bit cumbersome so we don't want to do that now you could do that potentially by telling your nginx to replace all occurrences of your unique identifier uh, on your page just like we're gonna be doing but honestly this is not worth the trouble since you can automatically inject this header uh, from your server or proxy and it is always easier to configure your uh, uh, server-side code or your proxy rather than redeploying your application for the entire user base so basically we're going to be getting rid of that since we don't need that and now with that said uh, we have a clean application so now the first step uh, is to actually somehow add uh, our nonce to our server because our nonce will be served from our server and then we're going to be injecting that into our application so the first step here is to essentially somehow get a unique number and then we need to replace all occurrences of our unique number inside of our application so to do that we can go down here and we can basically add this set of rules actually let's add them up here for clarity and basically we're saying that we're creating a variable called csp nonce and then we're automatically assigning uh, this variable the request id which is always unique per each request from our engine server then we're saying subfilter once off we're saying subfilter types uh, asterisk and then we're saying subfilter random nonce go, goes here uh, and then csp nonce so basically what this does is goes into the uh, files that you're serving to your user's browser and it replaces all occurrences of random nonce goes here uh, with our request id which is assigned to this variable so basically we're telling our, our server to go inside of our files find the string and replace it with our request id now the next step is to essentially uh, create our nonce on our application side so basically in here we want to go to our application root in our index.html and what we want to do is very straightforward we want to just add the following string in here so we want to say ng csp nonce equals random nonce goes here now in here basically you want to make sure that this string matches the string right here since it will be replaced by the server but we have a second place where we also need to declare the string so we would need to go into either our application.config.ts file or if you're using uh, modules you would need to go into your app module file and find the providers array uh, but anyhow the logic is pretty much the same we go into our providers array and we create a new object right here now in here we want to provide our nonce so we're just going to say provide and then nonce and in here we're just going to say use value and then we want to make sure that we're using the same value as we did in our engines configuration the last thing we want to do is to make sure that the nonce we're providing to the application is the same as the nonce we're providing to our content security policy and right now we're not providing anything to our content security policy and we can fix that like so so basically for our script source and style source all we need to do is go in here and we can add a string like this saying non stash and then we can use our variable from up here to essentially substitute uh, for our request id so in essence what we're doing is saying okay create a content security policy and only allow scripts and styles which carry this unique identifier then we're going to our application and we're substituting this arbitrary string with our unique identifier and then angular takes care of using that string 
to verify that all of the styles and scripts served by itself carry that unique identifier. So basically now we can save all of that and now we can actually build a new image and with this done we can go back to docker, we can kill our previous container and then we can simply start a new one. So we can just say 8089 here and we can click run and basically now if we go back into our application as you can see everything works as it should. So if we go into console we don't get any more errors and we can go into uh, this, these bundles here and we can actually see that the content security policy is set to the following and here is our nonce. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel.